Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have the full room. Uh, I'm Erin Herbert. I represent Health District 97, Belfast, Northport, and Waldo. Good morning. I'm Anne Mastracchio. I represent House District 18, which is part of the city of Stanford. Good morning. I'm Jules Stepkis. I represent District 105, which is the towns of Keene, Palmyra, St. Albans, Heartland, Ripley, and Cambridge. Hi there. I'm Dylan Bates. I represent House District 35, which is Westbrook. Good morning and welcome this Monday morning. My name is Paul Gilbert. I represent House District 74, towns of Jay, Livermore Falls, and town of Ripley. Good morning, everyone. I'm Representative Carl Ward. I represent Main House District 131, which are the towns east of Bangor, from Otis down to Stockton Springs. Good morning. I'm Ryan Peck. I represent District 11, Park River. Good morning and welcome. I'm Lawrence Lockman from Amherst. I represent House District 137, 15 towns and several townships in three counties and stretches from the Penobscot Valley all the way to the Hancock and Washington County Highlands. Very much. And we will be joined today by our committee analysts. Um, first bill today will be Henry Bouts, Diane Stewart here is our committee clerk. And then after this first bill, we'll actually be um, pivoting to Natalie Haynes. And then Henry will be back with us this afternoon. Uh, just a reminder to shut off all electronic devices. There's a $5 fine for interrupting the meeting. Um, and although we are Low on funds, so feel free to <laughs> There's no eating or drinking except by members of the committee in the committee room, um, it, with the exception of water. And um, please don't take a lack of, it as a lack of interest. If any of us get up and leave the room, um, we do occasionally have other business here at the State House, and um, we are very careful to go through our files and um, and read any testimony that's been submitted um, before the work session. So today, the order that we will be taking is LD 1373, and that to create the Put Me to Work program, or Put Me to Work program, followed by 1154, and that to provide for the establishment of benefit corporations, 1388, and that to clarify the used car info laws, uh, 1404, a resolve directing the Department of Professional and Financial Regulation to conduct a sunrise review of the proposal to license court reporters and legal reporters. LD 1405, an act to amend the licensing laws of the Maine Fuel Board. And LD 1364, an act to expand opportunities for economic development in Maine. If you are not here for one of those bills, um, feel free to leave and return after lunch at 12.30. We won't begin the afternoon slate of bills until at least 12.30, and it may be later than that, depending on the pace that we're able to, to move this morning. Um, and we will be using a clock today. So the way that we do that is that we um, extend the courtesy to um, bill sponsors and co-sponsors and other legislators of an unlimited amount of time. We do ask that that be respected. Um, and then we allow an unlimited amount of time for one designated proponent and one designated opponent, as well as members of um, the departments. And then we um, do a three minute clock for basically everybody else. Feel free to submit written testimony to us um, that can be longer in length. Feel free to say, you know, I agree with this person who, you know, came before me. Um, and sort of summarize, um, and then add any additional information that you have. Please be careful to sign in, and also to state your name and where you're from before you begin your testimony. Um, so everybody um, testifying at the public hearing today should be advised that it is being broadcast throughout the building and on the internet, and may be <coughs> recorded by people listening online. In addition, written testimony provided at the public hearing will be distributed to each member of the committee and posted on the legislature's website for viewing by all interested persons. Your persons testifying should be mindful that their testimony is public and will be available <coughs> to all interested members of the public once it is presented. So with that, we will begin the public hearing on LD 1373, an act to create the Put Mean to Work program. Thank 
you, and it's great to be with you guys this morning. Uh, my name is Mark Eves, I'm the Speaker of the Main House. I represent District 6, which is North Berwick and parts of South Berwick. Um, good morning to the entire committee. Uh, good morning to the Senate Chair, Senator Vogt, House Chair, Representative Herbig. I'm very excited to be here today to introduce LD 1373, an act to create the Put Me to Work program. I've been very proud to introduce this bill. Um, it is a bill which is a bipartisan job training initiative aimed at bringing workers <coughs> together, uh, the public sector together, employers together to grow good jobs and strong wages in our state. It's very simple, and here's how it works. The Put Me to, bill, the Put Me to Work bill calls for the investment of $5 million over five years for job training in high demand fields, uh, such as logging, forest products, machining, construction, and trades in, in healthcare and ag agriculture. The bill would also fund scholarships for workers and students to gain the skills they need to fill jobs in these growing sectors. Maine's comeback story depends on growing these good jobs and strong wages in our state. We must bring our workers and businesses together to prepare for the jobs of the future, and we do this by investing in training for workers and students in every region of the state. We are putting a down payment on growing the middle class. The Put Me to Work bill is a culmination of months of working with businesses and community leaders from your county to Aroostook County and, and in between on the best ways to grow our economy. And since January, I've traveled around the state along with many lawmakers from both parties on a jobs tour meeting with employers and workers and community leaders. And the number one thing, and you guys will not be surprised by this, that we have heard is that we need to invest in our workers if we are going to grow our economy. And we can all agree that Maine's economy is not where it should be or we were, we were where we would like it to be. And while Democrats and Republicans don't always agree on ways we can improve our economy, job training is an area where we have found common ground. I want to thank Senator Volk, and Senator Cushing, and Senator Patrick, Representative Herbig for their co-sponsorship on this bill. The Put Me to Work program is built on a track record of success. In my backyard, the collaboration between York County Community College, Pratt Whitney, and three dozen area employers is a successful model for the Put Me to Work program. Here's the story. A few years ago, when Pratt and Whitney's manufacturing facility in North Berwick landed the contract to build more fighter jet engines for our U.S. military, the company executives found themselves with a good problem to have, a growing business and a need to hire more skilled workers. At Pratt & Whitney, they needed workers with the right skills. So they and a group of nearly three dozen employers, including the shipyard, turned to York County Community College and state leaders to help create a public-private partnership that would train workers to meet that new demand. And in just the last few months, two of York County's largest employers, Pratt & Whitney and the shipyard, announced plans to hire 1,200 people both on turning to York County Community College's new machinist training program to hire the skilled workers they needed. The state invested $330,000 towards the public-private partnership, and it's already paid <coughs> off with the new jobs for Maine workers and students. Now, young students or workers who lost their jobs through no fault of their own have a chance to get the skills they need to get the high-skilled jobs of the future. And this past weekend, I had the great honor and privilege of addressing the graduating class of the York County Community College, and many of them have good paying jobs lined up right now. I got to see one of my neighbors who had struggled through job loss through the, re the recession graduate from the Precision Machining Program. Uh, it is a story that has been uh, heard and told over and over. These are folks that we know. It was very gratifying to see me, uh, to watch him walk across that stage with new opportunities, new life, um, an opportunity to look for a good job with strong wages. The public-private partnership between the industries and the college is exactly the kind of model we should be using across Maine to grow jobs, help workers, and help employers. The Put Me to Work program aims to create these kinds of industry-led, regionally-driven partnerships with industries across the state. The local industries in York County all had skin in the game, it started from the ground up with businesses taking the lead. They came to the table and the result has been good jobs and strong wages for our workers. 
While some community colleges and employers are doing this around the state, it is not comprehensive or coordinated. It is piecemeal. More action needs to be taken as our job growth, as our job growth and wages lag behind the nation. We need to do more and we need to do better. On our job store over the last few months, we've heard from loggers in western Maine, from farmers in central Maine, from forest industry products and wind industry leaders in northern Maine. The workforce of the future needs to be high skilled. Technology and innovation is at the heart of every growing industry. Jim Nichols, who owns the Nichols Brothers Logging Company in Rumford, said it best when, he, when we visited him. Logging is no longer walking into the woods with a lunch pail. The workers need to have existing and extensive training on complex machines. Several of the employers and community leaders we spoke with on the job store are here today to urge you to support this critical measure. We can answer their call. And I urge you to join me in supporting good jobs and strong wages in our state. I want to thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning, and I will answer any questions as I can. I look forward to the work session on Thursday. Any questions for Speaker Ease? Thank you. I was just beginning to read the bill. Um, the, it talks about um, the centers to work with private businesses to determine the demand for jobs and skills. And um, how do you envision that happening? Like through the chamber or through the um, Workforce Investment Board? or. So it can happen through a variety of venues, and I should have said from that at the outset, you have an amended version of the bill. Um, there are several places that we have already amended it through talking with um, some of our partners to make sure that this is effective. So it could happen in a variety of forms. The way that it happened effectively um, in your county through the, the, the partnership that I talked about, it, it happened organically uh, because there is a real need and interest in making sure that there is a workforce. Uh, so it could. Uh, happen through the Workforce Investment Boards. It could happen through um, a trade industry really taking the lead. Uh, you know, the man manufacturers uh, associations taking the lead. You'll hear today from the uh, professional logging contractors. Uh, they have done their homework, and that's where, when it becomes really successful, we can think around this horseshoe and in the, the state chambers uh, that we have a really great idea. But if it doesn't come uh, from the ground up, industry-led, uh, it has a, a high opportunity to fail. So we thought it was extremely important that that homework, that um, assessment is done on the ground, uh, led by the industries. Uh, typically, it has been led by trade associations or some type of business intermediary. Uh, some uh, trades and industries are very well organized uh, and have a potential to do this. Others are not. And this bill would help coordinate and organize that and facilitate that needs assessment that is required to make sure that we're making the investments uh, necessary in our workforce. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Representative Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll just follow up on um, what the speaker just said because I was involved as a municipal official in that whole process, and it really did take a lot of people getting the right people around the table and actually having the conversation. We have a problem. Department, we have a problem. What are we going to do about it? You know, we just keep passing around the same already skilled workers. We need to train some more. And honestly, it was a very, at the very basic level of getting to say, okay, who do we need to involve? And, and that's what I like about this process. We, we know now who we need to involve. And it is just getting everybody around the table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, Representative Gilbert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Speaker Eads. Uh, the Career Center works with uh, the FedEx, that's or uh, workers who lost their jobs because of uh, severe layoffs in manufacturing work or, and, uh, or closing. And uh, they've done a good job with that. And I'm wondering if this is modeled that for that. I'm also wondering if there's going to be training for jobs that are full time and good paying jobs that sustain both wages and benefits. That is the entire point of this the, the good jobs, strong wages. We need to make sure that we're not 
uh, just filling um, jobs, uh, but, but those that uh, pay a meaningful wage. So the intent of this legislation would be to invest in uh, growing sectors, high demand, high wage se sectors that um, have a shortage. So it is the coordination, the collaboration, just as the career centers, centers have done. Um, it is leveraging uh, what is existing and really coordinating and having a comprehensive approach uh, so that we can maximize all of our efforts. The financial assistance, the tuition grants that are in, outlined in the bill um, would, would be required to, to make sure that all other tuition assistance is being used uh, prior to um, accessing this grant money. But it is uh, not to duplicate, but to really see where this is happening and leverage those opportunities. Um, and one last question that I have is regarding. Um, looks like most of the most of this is done through the community college system, but um, what if what if there were a need through a that or through a transition? Would, would there be a way to somehow um, incorporate those? I think so, and that's where I think the committee can be extremely helpful after hearing the public testimony is really making sure that we get this right. This is housed in the quality centers of the community and college system, um, but we want to allow for enough flexibility as well. Um, they have been proven to be um, very good partners uh, in these types of collaborations, but if there are other venues that we can get folks around the table developing these training programs, that is the point and purpose of this bill. So I would certainly, as, as the primary sponsor, be open to writing it in a way that uh, allows for the most flexibility. Any last questions? Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Have a great day.